that now we've been able to you know take some of that knowledge and, and use it in modern times. So. Well, that's just that's perfect. You're doing great, Dave. You just led me to my next question. My guest tonight, Dave Considine. It's the Mallory Report tonight. Well, whenever you're listening to it, if you're listening to it, Dave. Tomorrow morning, Thursday, Saturday, whenever you're listening to it. Thank you for listening to it, of course. My next, well, it's, I got a, I've got a long way to go to get to this question. Two-part question, I guess. Um, Dave does a segment on Daniel Bouts' Grand Dark Conspiracy, which airs Monday and Tuesday, but the segment airs Tuesday nights on Shark Radio Network at 10 p.m. Eastern, so don't worry. You can go over there after you listen to my show if you're listening to it live, or you can go to granddarkconspiracy.com and keep the podcast. Either way, Dave does a great segment. Daniel does a good show. Okay. That wasn't the question. <laughs> that was leading up to the question. <laughs> Told you I had a long way to go to get to the question. Last week you were talking. Was that last week you were talking about how having this to disclose haunted houses, or if your house was yes. haunted? Yeah. You want to synopsize that for my listeners? I mean, you don't have to go through all the whole full, whole full bit, but obviously. Well, you mean they, uh, they can go uh, download the podcast, but can you give me? A, few, a minute I well, about that. Are you mean in general about the, about yeah, the kind of buying? General buying well, one thing I have to say about that, I'll start it off with this. Um, sometimes in some states, you really need to check into if you're buying, if you're, no, you know, you're no home buyer, you know, you want to check in to um, the person you're buying it from, the actual person you're buying it from, okay? Not their, if they're going through a company, the company may not in that state have to tell you, even if you ask. If you uh, see, was there a meth lab here? Was there, um, uh, you know, any murders here? Um, has the house had any problems? You know, has there been any type of uh, infestations? You know, of, of any any type, even insects and whatnot. In some states, the the company that's selling it does not have to tell you, but the homeowner does. A lot of people wouldn't talk to the homeowner. They would never have that opportunity because they're going through the company. So, some states you have to find out exactly where you stand. It's it's different in every state. Now, sometimes you have to divulge if a house is haunted. And uh, this goes for Connecticut. It goes for New York. Um, Mass has got it. Um, quite a few states. You know, it's not so much that the house is, is haunted or not. It's just that there might have been an association with the house throughout the neighborhood. It could affect the cost of the house. You know, if somebody puts up their house uh, on the market as being haunted, that could affect the person, you know, uh, in buying it or not buying it. But if somebody puts the uh, story in a paper and puts their house address in there, that could also affect it. So uh, the buyer might want to know about these certain things. Um, the Ackley case, you know, with, with these, it, it's not the only one. I mean, it, it, there's been other other subjects, you know, other spiritual subjects. We have that uh, the devil in Connecticut, you know, proving that this, does the devil exist. That was another case that came up. Proving something spiritual, like, I think I mentioned before, it was that the person itself, the bottom line with that case, in the Ackley case, was the bottom line was that the person themselves had made publicly known that the house may have been haunted, and people knew about this house. There was tours that were coming up to this house, so um, this is a little bit of an extreme case, but the person had already bought the house, didn't have this knowledge. They lived, you know, in New York City, they didn't have any knowledge of the, of the folklore or any of the stories you know, about this house or any of the associated houses being from New York City. So when they got there after they bought the house, they weren't happy about this. They didn't want people walking around their house. As you um, can imagine, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you really need to check in your particular state. It's very, very important. They can look in. Um, I did a, an article with um, Money Magazine that's still online. And uh, I did the show... Uh, the excerpt I played, I didn't put my part on because it would be too long. It was already nine minutes. So I just put the, the other guy, you know, did a great job talking about the stuff. But I was talking more about the ghost stuff. So, I mean, it was more important you guys hear him because it was, you know, he talked about what he was talking about. It was more of the financial end. So, it's like I said, it's very, it's funny. You know, when you go into a place like Colorado, you can have different laws than you're going to have in California. California is not so lenient. California, you know, you can be able to work with them. I mean, they have you have leverage there. You have uh, leverage in some states. Some states don't want to hear you. You know, and if you if you buy the house and you have a problem, you may, you may not be able to get out of the contract. So I would definitely check in to see what the laws are. You know, covering you for um, was it something you know associated with drugs? 
Could it have been associated with the murder? Could it have been, um, uh, like I said, you know, something of a spiritual nature? Did anything happen? You know, uh, people complaining about anything? Um, you might find out if there's any waste sites around. I mean, if you find some barrels in the back that might have some strange fluid, you know, coming out of them, it might be, you know, a piece of property you don't want. So you want to make sure that what you're buying, even the surrounding property, make sure that uh, you're getting what you're what you're, what you're getting, and, and uh, if you don't like it or something goes wrong, that you can get out of that, or you have some some uh, alternate way of uh, fixing the problem, because you can get stuck with a house that's two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and uh, you're not gonna be able to put it. I want to thank my my I'm using air quotes here producer tonight, Sherry James, because she just posted up there. Be sure to tell them the words the real estate agent uses real estate agent uses when the house is haunted. Oh, okay, so the uh, real estate agent was talking to you? Yeah. Yeah, if they were forefront about it, they'd tell you straight out. If um, if they say, well, you know, I mean, if, I mean, like if they was to say something lightly to you, what would they say? Yeah. Well, if a house was haunted and they wanted to let you in on it, they'd probably say, well, you know, um, people have hurt things. And they're gonna, they're probably going to toss it off and just laugh about it. They want to sell you that house. Or you might want I to mean, start to the report. But there's no agent out there that's going to. There's no one out there that's going to say, you know something? Let me tell you something. There was a murder in here, and somebody sees a guy with red eyes in the window. They're not going to tell you that. They're going to laugh it off and say, ha, 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 You know, and try to get you to buy this house. Thinking that you're not going to think anything of it, and you're going to roll it off because they probably don't believe it themselves. To bring Jason if you're buying a piece of prop- property, that's an old piece of property, do some history checking. Go down to the town hall. Ask, ask people. I mean, if, is there anything that you've ever heard about that house? Anything around that piece of property or anything like that? You know, you know some of the people in the town halls are real nice. They don't get sucked to many people. So, <laughs> you know, it's one of those local little town halls. Some of them. Some of them. Some well, I mean, the if, you're buying that, a, if you're buying an old house, it's maybe like 1800s or something like that. I mean, maybe somebody knows something about it. But you can go into some of the records. You can go to uh, the newspaper is kind of hard to do because it's either a computer or you got to go to the old microfiche. I don't even know if you even have that anymore. Um, but uh, you're going to have to look at um, biographical records. You're going to have to look at um, you know uh, pro- you know lots of blueprints. You know to see if you know where this property extends to. See where your boundaries are. And, you know if you're buying this or we're that interested in it. But, uh, look at surrounding property too. Uh, and another thing, look at your neighbors. I, I had a case not too long ago that this guy, he was across the way, and he was involved with some certain things. Um, he was like a sexual cult. And uh, there were some weird things that were happening. Uh, this woman was seeing this creature that was appearing in her house. But anyway, long story short, she really didn't want to live across from this guy. And once you invest your money in something, you know, she was afraid to even te- you know, to tell the authorities about this guy. He actually came to her house one time and threatened her. Because he saw, you know, he was popping off. Uh, well, he was he was doing something to um, feed the family. I don't want to get into the details; it's kind of gross. But uh, he was running kind of like a small farm. But anyway, she was she didn't want her children to see this because he was doing it out in front. So um, he came right into the house and threatened her, and she she called the police. And they wouldn't they didn't do anything about it. So you can get yourself into a situation. You kind of really look at your neighbors too. You know, even if you're, I mean, even if it's not spiritual or anything like that, what does, you, does the neighbor around here have a, a son that has cake parties every weekend? Um, are you looking at somebody who's going to be, you know, you got a drummer next door? I mean, are you okay with that? You check out your, you're going to be living there for quite a while, especially if you're spending that much money on a, on a piece of property. You wouldn't buy a car that has a ding in it. So don't buy a piece of property that has a ding in it. Do that research, you know, go down and, uh, and find out. Like I said, the first place to start is a town hall. And um, if you gotta go a little bit more, I mean, you can go into uh, you go online. You know, some of the some of the information you can get, you know, your resources right there are right online. You can go right to sometimes even the, even the, uh, the town's uh, website and have resources for you. So you can find out whatever you need. So and if you, uh, usually what we do in a case is we'll have the family work with us. That's one project that you can do as a researcher. Um, the family get them involved if there's a particular piece of property that you think is, might be haunted. There might be some history to it. Get the family to go check it out. You know, have have them go and check out and get the records or whatnot. You have to have them like search through them. Have them bring it to you. But for them to go down and, and get them, more than likely they're the ones that are known in the town, and they're not going to have a problem getting these records, and they own the property. Yeah, makes that conversation go easier. 
Yeah. And, and if you want to hear the full segment, like I mentioned earlier, but I want to get that back out there just because. Now that we've discussed it a little bit further. GrandDarkConspiracy.com. Uh, Daniel Belt does a great show. What's what's uh, Stark Radio Network, 10 o'clock Eastern Time, Tuesday night. So what's your topic tonight? I mean, you obviously don't give oh, full details. Tonight. I what? forgot already. Oh, no. Put them right on the spot and you miss it. Oh, flying airships. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I filmed one of these recently. I have reported it to Peter Davenport. And let me tell you something. He is one of the sweetest people I've ever talked to. Peter Davenport at the National UFO Reporting Center is one of the nicest people I have ever talked to on the phone. He was just absolutely great. And uh, matter of fact, he, he talked to me on the phone, and he had to do a coast-to-coast show, and he was absolutely good on the phone. I reported it to him, and uh, told him what I saw. I saw a large cigar shape. It looked uh, no wings on it at all, and it just it was it was a just like a tube. But there was one, at one point in time we saw the strange thing was is that we had a repeat. We saw one one particular uh, day, which is in the beginning of, of the month, and then we saw four of them at the same time at the end of the month. And they just flew by. Two of them flew up into the sky, and two of them took right right angles, like 90 degree angles, and just jetted off to the west. But I got them on film, and I got them on camera also. Luckily, there was, on that that one there, there was four of them, and they were flying uh, near each other. And um, I was able to. I, had, well, I got the camera and the video camera. So, um, but uh, yeah, we're doing doing the shows tonight. But you know, these flying ships have been seen for a very very long time. You know, I, I, I was looking in the history of this you know, quite a ways back, and these have been seen since time immemorable. I mean, really, it's, there's no way it's our technology. I mean, Lockheed Martin might be flying some stuff, but no. no. Some of these things, I mean, they, you know, I'm going to play a recording on here. You know, some of these, this one ship that flew by this uh, major airline, I'm going to give it away here, that flew by doing 700 miles an hour. There's no dirigible or balloon that's going to fly at 700 miles an hour. And there's windows on five things, yeah. Well, there are transports, you know, hyperdimensional. There are people who are more scientific, they can see dimensional. I stick in more in the spiritual. Spiritual and dimensional are the same thing. If it doesn't exist in this world, it's dead. Anything that's not alive in here is dead. Whatever way you want to think about dead. Yeah. It's not here. It doesn't exist here. Or if it's here, it's fleeting. And you'll notice that every bit of the phenomenon, I don't care if it's Huge, dirigible things flying through the sky, or Bigfoot, or Loch Ness monster, they're all are fleeting. They only show up for a minute and pop, they're gone. There's a lot of signs you get showed that they all come from the same source. And these, all of these things, all of these things, they come from an alternate dimensional void. You know, we call in, in, in you and me, you know, the way we think, it's the netherworld. It's it's that other side. You know, um, some scientists may think it's some type of, you know, hyperdimensional void, you know, whereas, you know, like Einstein's saying, the string theory, and there's many strings, and there's many different uh, existences, you know. Well, Dave, here we, are, here we are, almost. I want to thank you for, 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 yeah, oh. right there. So I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me tonight. Absolutely. And uh, Absolutely. I look forward to I doing it again. So. I was going to call you from the car. I don't know if they know that. I I I I to the motel just before the show, so I'm so glad I was able to do it. But uh, I'm gonna sleep very well tonight. All right. Well, go to bed. Actually, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get us out of here. So have a good night, bud. Bye bye. Before we flip that on air sign to the off position, a quick reminder: for all things about the report, previews, and reviews, go to italkparanormal.com. That's italkparanormal.com. Good night. This is Thomas Fusco, author of the book Behind the Cosmic Veil, A New Vision of Reality, and you are listening to Mallard Report. Hey, everybody. It's the Mallard Report. Oh, no.